I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to cover home cooking as part of our series on pet nutrition. Join me, you'll learn something. It's pretty common for me and for other veterinarians to hear that people are considering cooking a meal for their pets at home. Most often they seem to have the perception that it would be healthier to do this. And so we're going to talk about what the actual research on pet home cooking has shown us and the common pitfalls that we find and what can be done to try to minimize those risks. So there was a large study from UC Davis that evaluated 200 recipes from over 30 different sources. They were looking online, from books, from veterinarians, from websites, all over the place. And what they found is shocking. Only nine out of the 200, only nine, met the bare minimum AFCO standards. That's shockingly bad. This means if you are feeding a home-cooked meal using a recipe that you found somewhere, 95% of you are not feeding a diet that is balanced and doesn't have at least one if not multiple deficiencies in it. This is a big deal and it's a big problem and um, this is one of the major reasons why many veterinarians discourage home cooking. So let's look a little further into, okay, so there were a few that did meet AFCO standards, but as we've talked about in the first part of this series, the AFCO standards are embarrassingly low, and essentially those standards tell us that, you know, if you feed this nutrition to a small number of dogs for a few months, they don't die. And that's just not a good enough standard for our pet food today. So the study also looked at how many of the recipes reached the National Research Council's minimum requirements. And there were only five of the 200 that met those standards. Now, of those five, four of them were formulated by a board-certified veterinary nutritionist. We've covered what that is also in part one of the series. I'll link it here for you now. So what this tells us is that if you are considering home cooking, you must be working with a board certified veterinary nutritionist. You must. Otherwise, the likelihood of you feeding a complete diet is essentially zero. So in that study, four of the 200 recipes were written by board certified veterinary nutritionists and all of them met the standards for the minimum nutrition needs. That is reassuring at least that if you are working with a veterinary nutritionist, it reduces the risk of you harming your pet. Some of the most common deficiencies were with choline, vitamin D, vitamin E, and zinc. And these are big problems because deficiencies with these can lead to immune system dysfunction, fatty liver, musculoskeletal development problems, and all veterinarians have multiple horrific stories of seeing pets that are on home-cooked meals, and these pets have horrific malformations of their bones, or they even have bone fractures. Because the deficiencies were very commonly w involving the same nutrients, even if you try to rotate recipes, it's not going to help your pet, it's not going to fix the problem. There's this perception that feeding pets is simple and easy, but really to do it well is very challenging and there's been so much research over decades and so much expertise has gone into the WSAVA compliant options that we have. It's impossible to do that well at home. Another problem that this study found was that 92% of the recipes had vague instructions and so what that means is that if one person reads the recipe and makes that recipe, they will do so differently from another person reading the recipe and making it. Of course, you can understand why this is a major problem. What was also shocking to me was that 85% of these recipes lacked calorie information. <laughs> how are you supposed to know 
how much you're supposed to feed your pet if you don't even know the calorie density of what you're making. You, you can't. A second major problem with home cooking is the lack of consistency of the humans. And we have research on this as well. So there was a study in 2015 that showed after being set up with a proper, fully balanced recipe by a veterinary nutritionist, after one year's time, this is not very long at all, only 13% of the people were still making that diet properly. 87% of the people that started out with the proper information they needed were doing it wrong after only 12 months. Even when you give people all the information they need, the vast majority are unable to continue doing that level of nutrition for their pets. Third, there is no bioavailability information about the micronutrients that you're feeding. So we've covered this before in part one of the series about WSABA standards. Just because you give a pet a certain amount of something doesn't mean that their body is able to use it. And so this is a huge pitfall with home cooked diets because we simply don't know how much of that nutrition the animal's body is able to use. And there's no way around this. The what supplies you're purchasing from the grocery store, the bioavailability of those nutrients is going to vary from season to season, from store to store, from brand to brand, and there's no way to test that. This is why if people are insisting on home cooking, they must work with a veterinary nutritionist, and it's also going to be crucial that physical exams full blood work panels and your analysis tests are done on your pet every four to six months for a healthy pet. This is kind of the best we can do to try to catch issues as they start popping up. So in the research studies on home cooked pet nutrition, there's also no findings that support there is any benefit to it. And so after all of these things have been said, it's crucial that you avoid home cooking for young animals. This means for most cats and dogs that are younger than a year old, but for large breed and giant breed dogs, that would mean younger than 18 months. This is because during growth, there's very specific calcium to phosphorus ratios that are necessary, caloric intake changes on a week to week basis, there are growth spurts, there's all these other things that we just can't account for with home cooked meals. The second scenario where you must avoid home cooking is for a pregnant or lactating animal. That's because during these times, energy requirements are really high and it's not possible to home cook for that demand to keep both mom and offspring healthy. Third, you must not home cook if your pet is overweight. This is because it's impossible to reduce the calorie density enough while still giving them all of the micronutrients they need to support weight loss in a healthy way. The fourth reason is because a lot of pets frankly, won't eat a properly balanced home-cooked diet. And this is especially true for our cats. You might have a pet that really likes a little bit of your cooking when you are making meals for the family. And this is a totally different matter. For many people, cooking is associated with love and they feel like they are loving their pet when they give them a little piece of something that they've cooked. So the only thing to keep in mind if you're going to do that is that all treats and toppers must be less than 10% of your pet's daily caloric intake. The other 90% of their daily caloric needs must come from their WSAVA compliant diet. As long as you stick within those parameters and you're not giving your pet anything that's toxic for them, feel free to offer them small amounts of things that you're cooking at home if it makes you feel good. So if your pet does not fit into the aforementioned definite no's for home cooking, and we still have a few more things to think twice about. One, home cooking is more expensive than buying a WSAVA compliant diet. So if cost is at all a concern, home cooking is not for you. It's also going to be more expensive because the 
of the increased frequency that's necessary for physical exams, blood work panels, and urinalyses. So the cooking itself is more expensive and the increased monitoring is more expensive. Two, home cooking is way more time consuming. Way, way, way more. And most pets would benefit far more from additional enrichment with you if you spent that time on a hike or a snafari style walk, or if you did a weekly agility class, or if you train your cat to use a harness and leash or build them a catio, those sorts of enrichments will be far more beneficial to your pet than spending the time home cooking. We also need to think twice if the pet has any medical issues. The reason to think twice is because we don't have any proven therapeutic value for any of the recipes that might be used for these pets. And when we compare that to the WSAVA compliant prescription diets that are therapeutic, they are designed specifically for specific medical issues and they are proven to help with those issues. Our home cooked diets do not have any of those benefits. Now I'll give you a caveat here. Say you have a pet that has some renal failure, you've been giving them the therapeutic diet, but now they just don't want to eat that anymore. Honestly, they don't really want to eat much of anything anymore. This might be a perfect situation to consider working with a veterinary nutritionist for a home cooked diet. And the reason is getting your pet to eat anything at this end stage of life is better than them eating nothing. And we also aren't really worried about the risks of deficiencies and bioavailability because we're only going to be feeding this home cooked diet for a relatively short period of time. So for these cases, I love working with a veterinary nutritionist to get a home cooked diet. It can give a little bit more time with a good quality of life for those specific situations. So if you are in a situation where home cooking is what you'd like to pursue, there are a couple things that you must do. And the first is that you absolutely must work with a board certified veterinary nutritionist and no one else. Only they are qualified to make recipes that are going to be appropriate nutrition for your pet. Now there is a website called Balance It. Link it in the description below. It is run by a veterinary nutritionist and if your pet is healthy, you could consider looking at this website. It is a reputable source of information. However, for pets that have any medical issues, you must work one-on-one -on -one with a veterinary nutritionist. I will link a website so that you can find one to consult with who is near you. And then as mentioned before, you must be doing the appropriate physical exam, blood work, and your analysis panels to monitor your pet over time to minimize the risks. Thank you so much for joining me. Next time we will be covering raw pet nutrition. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.